I'd like to welcome everyone to the groundbreaking ceremony for the H. Fletcher Brown Retirement Apartments. Um, we're very excited. We've been working on this project for a very long time. Um, I'd like to take a minute before we uh, get into some of this to thank everyone uh, who has helped Ingleside get to this point. Um, there's been many, many people uh, over the last seven, eight, or nine years. Um, we're going way back. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jane Vincent, um, uh, Leon Wiener, um, and in-house a lot of times we forget to thank our own people. Um, so I'd like to thank Kathy Cessna who uh, raised the money um, uh, through the HUD 202 grant to get this project started. And uh, Carol Rachowski, um, she's worked on this project since day one uh, with uh, Pamela um, from Leon Wiener. They're the ones that really do all the, the grunt work. Um, I can't tell you how many forms and binders and uh, things that they've put together over the last eight, nine years, but thousands uh, of pages. Um, so thank everyone who's helped to get us to this, to this point. Uh, Mr. Brown who was an inventor, a botanist, a, uh, a philanthropist, and he began uh, uh, by giving H. Fletcher Brown Mansion um, to become a home for the age. And we're very happy that we're able to continue that tradition by renovating the mansion, adding addition, and bringing it back to uh, its original purpose that he intended to provide affordable housing for low-income seniors. Uh, in Delaware. Um, little did we know that when we began this project, uh, we would end up at the Supreme Court. We would go through uh, three administrations and uh, seven board chairs of Ingleside, all of which um, uh, bought into the project, uh, supported the project, and knew that developing the mansion into affordable housing uh, for seniors uh, was, was a good goal and was a good path to expand Ingleside's mission. Um, so uh, uh, again, we're, we're happy that we're continuing that tradition and look forward to opening the building to low-income seniors. Uh, there's one man that's been uh, with us from the beginning, uh, giving us uh, his support um, uh, and, and supported many of Ingleside's uh, projects. Uh, Senator Carper um, has been with Ingleside for many, many years. I remember about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, he came to talk to our residents. And uh, little did he know that um, I was going to put him on a bus and take him to a vacant building about three blocks from here. And uh, he, he agreed to go. And we looked at a vacant assisted living facility that was full of mold and dirt. And uh, I told him that I wanted to make it Delaware's first affordable assisted, assisted living facility. And after touring and listening to the proposal, he got behind us. Uh, the facility has now been open for 10 years. Um, we've served uh, low-income seniors in assisted living environment that otherwise would most likely be in a nursing home. And we've saved the state over $12 million uh, in Medicaid dollars doing so and a lot of it uh, through the support of uh, Senator Carper. So I would like to, in, uh, to invite Bill Kane and uh, uh, Ed Hoffman. Bill Kane is the, uh, the chairman of the board of Ingleside Homes Incorporated. And uh, Mr. Hoffman is the chair of the resident council uh, of uh, Ingleside Retirement Apartments. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I've been uh, the, the board chair for the last two years, one of the seven that have been involved in this project. Uh, and I just, uh, when I've been on the board for seven years, and Senator Carper has been here for that whole time, uh, has, been, has supported everything we've done here. So uh, in honor of that, we just wanted to present a, uh, a, an award to Senator Carper uh, it, it basically says, presented, presented to U.S. Senator Tom Carper by Ingleside Homes, Inc. 
uh, in recognition of your outstanding commitment to senior citizens in Delaware, in Delaware uh, and it's on this day, the groundbreaking here at H. Fletcher Brown Apartments, that we would like to present this to Senator Carter. So, He's alive, but he's, <laughs> he's not, not here in the room like this, uh, this morning. But uh, uh, he worked for three years on this project. And very grateful to, to Josh. If, if you are in this room and you've done helping in ways large or small to help get us to this point today, raise your hand. Let's put our hands together for them. Susan. <laughs> I just come uh, from the University of Delaware. Sorry, running a little bit late. We, ran into a parking lot on 95. Oh, okay. Some of you may have said it as well. But um, I, uh, I remember uh, got Mayor, one of my first people I met at the University of Delaware was a brand new first uh, uh, first semester uh, graduate student uh, where I think of it, the university where you and our congresswoman and some others. How many of you have ever been a uh, student, graduate, undergraduate student at the University of Delaware? And it was back at the University of Delaware. I remember there, first class, one of the first class I took in business school was in class on, um, on land use management. And the uh, not, was an uh, urban affairs class. And I, uh, I met a guy named Leon Wiener. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was about this tall. <laughs> and and yeah, how many of you ever met Leon Wiener? He's, I used to tell him that he learned to whisper in the sawmill. <laughs> <laughs> he was rough and rough, and, uh, and, uh, but he had a huge heart, a heart not as big as Delaware, but as big as Texas. And uh, he, uh, he wanted to try to provide the housing for, for some of the least of these in, uh, in our society. And uh, our professor, uh, Jerome Moose, who many of us know, uh, brought him in as a, uh, just as a guest. And he lectured us for a while and he took questions. And it was a wonderful conversation. And that was like one of my first memories of coming to Delaware right after the Vietnam War. It was like 1973, fall of 73. And uh, all these years later, it's sort of like booking. We only made your president the creation when I first came here. Here's a, uh, a project that, that these folks have, have worked on. I want to commend uh, all of you for that. I, I had to just say one other thing and stop. When uh, I was invited to come to university today to, uh, to speak, and, and our congressman may be invited to speak to the same group too, but there are students from all over the world, from all over the world. A lot from uh, Africa, from Asia. They are people of different faiths and uh, different colors. And um, they are uh, here with us for, uh, for a while. And uh, one of them uh, talked to me about, uh, like, well, I asked a question basically about my moral compass. My moral compass. And uh, I told them that uh, it relates to uh, uh, the golden rule, treat other people the way we want to be treated. And that uh, uh, I asked how many people, there were Christians, some Christian, Catholics, some Catholics, Jews, uh, one or two Jews. There were a lot of folks who were Muslim, there were folks who were Buddhist, Hindu, but uh, they're all different faiths. And I said, every one of your faiths has a golden rule in it. Treat other people where you want to be treated. It may not be exactly the word, but the, the meaning is the, uh, the same. And another student that later on raised uh, her hand and asked a, 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 a similar kind of question about moral authority and that sort of thing, governing moral authority. And, uh, and I said, uh, I know, I said, you know when we talked earlier about the golden rule house in every major religion in the world, but in, uh, in my, my faith, Protestant, uh, our home church, Presbyterian Church, is Westminster is just right down the road is it? on, uh, on uh, uh, 152, Pennsylvania Avenue. But I said we're always reminded by a pastor here of uh, something called Matthew 25, 
In Matthew 25, it goes, it's about the least of these. When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was uh, naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick in prison, did you visit me? When I was a stranger in your land, did you welcome me? And as I said, that last word, the last verse, when I was a stranger in your land, did you welcome me? Every one of those students, about six or seven men, all of them shook their head. Did you welcome me? I said, in Matthew 25, it doesn't say anything about it. When I was old, and uh, pretty much spent my whatever resources I saved, and I didn't have a whole lot, and I maybe needed health care, somebody helped take care of me. Did you help me? Did you help me? And uh, for those who've been involved in this project, and others like it, uh, in section, uh, what is it, two, is it 202 or 236? But uh, the, uh, for the folks, the taxpayers, if they paid money, that I should use in these projects. And everybody to help build them and complete them. I, uh, I just want to say, uh, just a real congratulations. And really for uh, uh, living the faith, whatever your faith might, uh, might be. Because we do not have unlimited resources, the federal government, the state, or the city, what we have to do is try to meet those moral responsibilities uh, in fiscally sustainable ways. And that's uh, one of the uh, reasons why I have the 202 problem. And we get a lot of folks who do work together, a lot of different interested parties to work together. And we get the job done. And uh, again, I just want to say for everybody else, this is, uh, I'm happy to see this. Uh, and, uh, but I'm just delighted that we finally come to this day. There was a young girl there this morning at the University of Delaware with her mom. Her mom is a professor. And uh, the, the young girl was 11 uh, years old. On the day that uh, she was born, this project was in its inception. <laughs> <laughs> and she's 11 years old today on her way. And this project is done, or will be done, before too long. These were seven dollars plus. And, uh, and one PS, you know, we had some lawsuits that were involved in this. And part of the, you know, when you're a project like this, uh, you have to always be mindful of how other people around you feel and how this impacts your life. And uh, a lot, I think a fair amount of time and attention was given to that. I hope at the end of the day that the neighbors and the people who have raised those concerns will be uh, proud of this project. And, and at the end of the day, this will be a win-win for every single one of us. And particularly for the folks who live here in the years to come for a long, long time. And to, uh, uh, I would say to H. Fletcher Brown, God bless you. Thank you. You know, Larry, when, when we started this project, uh, I was a kid. <laughs> now I'm old enough to live here. <laughs> uh, thank you, and I have a bus out front to take the door of the building. <laughs> Uh, our next guest, uh, she be be <coughs> began her education across the street right in Padua. Uh, Delaware is a small state, um, so it's nice to have people involved that are familiar with the area, um, uh, were involved with the area. Um, she uh, serves on the House Committee uh, on Education and Workforce, as well as the House Committee on Agriculture. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester uh, to the stage, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am thrilled to be here, and uh, as was stated, I actually spent many years across the street at, at Padua, and you know my remarks actually are about the fact that sometimes we don't even recognize what's in our own neighborhood, what's in our own vicinity, what buildings, who buildings are even named after. And so for me, this is a special day, not only because it represents perseverance, but it also represents our collective community. To see so many partners come together through so many years and to be able to accomplish such a great thing. Um, I want to spend one second talking about Dr. H. Fletcher Brown. Only because all these years I've heard the name of Brown, you know, the Boys Club, I, but I didn't realize what kind of person this was and why this is so significant today. Dr. Brown, for, well, first of all, who in here knows the story or knows that much about Dr. Brown? Raise your hand. I got a couple of people. Yeah, yeah, about five. <laughs> but I didn't know this. I didn't know that he came to Delaware by way of the DuPont Company. 
as a chemist. I'm, I'm actually on my way after this to the DuPont company, to the experimental station, so it's kind of fitting. He served there for almost three decades and then left and became just consumed with public service. And that's why Tom Parker getting that award is so significant as well, because this is a person who is consumed with public service and also helping the rest of us to get that bug as well. Throughout his time, Dr. Brown's philanthropic spirit was certainly on full display. He donated everything from his family's manuscripts to the Delaware Historical Society, and he even funded, helped to fund the Walnut Street Y. I didn't know that, that the Walnut Street Y is there because of Dr. Brown. His legacy is unquestionably felt across our city and our state, and he donated that mansion behind us, uh, along with his wife, with the specific goal that that would be used for our aged population, or seasoned, as I like to call us, <laughs> now that I'm over 50. <laughs> Thanks to Ingleside and their partners in the public and private sector, Dr. Brown's vision is becoming a reality. There are so many great people in this room who played a part, and some of you raised your hand. Uh, one person who's also here is our Senator, Margaret Rose Henry, who actually has real roots in this project as well. This project, when complete, will house 35 new units that will be affordable for our seniors. That's commendable. Ingleside itself understands this obligation to our seniors. This redevelopment project will help us meet that obligation. I'm really excited because not only do we get the shovels and the hats and we get to, to break ground, but soon we'll get to cut a ribbon. And I hope to be here on the day that we cut that ribbon. Congratulations to everyone who's been involved and we're looking forward to the people who will actually get to enjoy the benefits of Dr. Brown's work and legacy. Thank you. Um, Mike Brzezicki is our 56th mayor. Uh, I've worked with three different mayors on this project. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and the city of Wilmington has been very supportive uh, of Ingleside throughout the years, not only through this project, but through our uh, home repair program, our Ingleside Senior Services Outreach Program, uh, the assisted living um, they help fund it, and many of our other programs that we work with <clears throat> to help low-income seniors um, that are brought to us through the LNI department that are uh, homeless or, uh, or would soon be homeless. Um, that through our Ingleside Senior Services Program, we're able to help assist them find affordable, safe housing and other facilities. So we look forward to working with you um, on uh, other upcoming projects that we have, and I'd like to uh, welcome uh, you to the stage, Mayor. Larry, I feel like I'm the only one in the room who's had nothing whatsoever to do with the success of this project. <laughs> but you did have a champion up here, my buddy Tom Carper. People, um, and Lisa alluded to it, I think, you know, the kid, they think they call him governor for life because governors get to do stuff, kind of like mayors do, by the way. And I'm sure he's, you won't admit it, but I know he's frustrated as hell being down there in the Senate where you really, it's hard to kind of do stuff and uh, turn over big pieces of dirt. You know, Tom really hired me, and he won't, he won't say it that way, but uh, 21 years ago, uh, he hired me. He saw something in me down at the riverfront, and um, it was always so much fun because he loved every project. He loved everything we did because of his heart. He's a builder and a creator, and I think that's great stuff. So this project uh, adds new meaning to the uh, saying that uh, all good things are worth waiting for. You know, I, uh, that's a long time coming. 
but in the development business, as I've been for a good bit of my life and my own way, and then of course down at the riverfront, I just know that sometimes that's what it takes. I mean, some of these things are so hard. They just frustrate the dickens out of you, but they can be uh, so difficult. You know, uh, as mayor, you know, you're, you've, got, you've got to confront a lot of things. Margaret Rose, don't we? <clears throat> and you know, they're not always they're not always easy. But there are people that just like to look on the dark side and complain about the problems. And then there are people that just say, you know, we're going to overcome our problems. We're not going to sit there and we're not going to sit there and stare them in the eye every single day and get depressed over them. We're just going to rebuild our city, and that's what we're doing. You know, we we have a city that some people want to focus on some of our problems, and some people say the hell with them, we're gonna overwhelm them. We're gonna build our city so much that these problems are gonna sink in, in, into the recesses of the city's profile, and that's what we wanna do. The, uh, I just wanna say one thing, that part of, of building that and creating that positive momentum is to have a mindset of an investment. You just gotta invest. And so, let the others complain. I'm happy to have you all join us as people who want to invest in our city and build our city, and it's such a worthwhile way. So congratulations to all of you, and I'm, as your mayor, I'm very grateful for your efforts on our behalf of our senior citizens. Thanks very much. Um, as I stated, we've worked on this project for many, many years, and also from the beginning, uh, DSHA. Um, uh, I don't know how many people um, within DSHA I've worked with on this project, but it, it's been a lot. Um, always been very supportive, always been um, a can-do attitude. Uh, we would run into roadblocks, and they would help us find uh, solutions um, to, those, to those roadblocks. Uh, also, um, one of the things that, that Ingleside appreciates uh, about DSHA is not just this project, but um, they're, they're a true partner. They don't just uh, help you uh, develop a, product, a, a, a project, but they stay with you the whole way through. Um, this building, Ingleside Retirement Apartments, has been around since the early 70s, and I still call DSHA and their support people for help with issues, um, uh, you know, almost every month uh, with things that, that come up. So to have a partnership like that and someone that will support you and help you not only develop but maintain affordable housing for low-income seniors is very important to our success. Um, Anas has been the director since uh, 2009 um, and uh, helped uh, build many projects, develop many new programs and we want to thank him for his support and give him the opportunity to make some comments. Thank you, Larry. And uh, I'm sure Susan Elison was reporting all the good positive stuff you said about the SHA. <laughs> We're going to pass it along to Trish. Uh, well, I want to congratulate everybody who has been involved in this project. As I was telling Glenn and, uh, and, and others, I have toured the mansion, I think, almost nine years ago. Uh, and I had Jerry Jones with me, uh, if you remember Larry, who toured it. And uh, I think it was summer 09, and you guys were putting the application together. So uh, kudos to you and all the partners who have worked hard in this project. I know the developer, the contractor, the attorneys, especially Senator Copper and your staff, you really have saved, saved this deal. Uh, so DSHA is one of the partners, one of the funders, so we have about $2 million worth of uh, state funding to close the gap, and I wanna thank Senator Henry for being here and for your support with the Housing <coughs> Development Fund and state funding. We also are a located agency of $500,000 of low-income housing tax credit that Senair is helping to turn to about $4.5 million worth of equity. Uh, so thank you, Senair. And I also want to thank our staff, Susan, Stephanie, and folks who are not even here for the hard work and the many conference calls and, and emails uh, to make uh, this a reality. Uh, just to deviate a little bit and highlight what we have some, uh, some of our delegation members here, 
just to highlight that the city is using home money uh, to close the gap on this project, it's about 525,000, uh, which is great. Uh, that's the positive side. On the negative side, home money, along with CDBG, the Community Development Grants, are two funding sources that have been identified, <coughs> not just for reduction, for elimination by the Trump administration. And that will eliminate about $12 million of flexible funding that's coming uh, to Delaware, uh, collectively to different jurisdictions. And these are funding that are flexible, that we have used many and many times from things like uh, rehabbing or replacing a leaky roof for a senior citizen to closing a gap on multifamily deals. These are funds that have been, will be used here. Uh, are, have been used in uh, Sacred Heart 2 on the other side of town for 26 apartments, have been used, we just had an event down in Dover with Senator Coons for a tax credit apartments uh, complex, <coughs> have been used for uh, rehab 11 homes in a Pine Town community in Sussex that's uh, underserved. Uh, funds that have been used to uh, rehab a bathroom uh, for uh, uh, Dave who is 21 years in uh, Lewis, uh, who is uh, handicapped, and his mom has had a hard time getting in to just satisfy a basic human need, going to the bathroom. And because of this federal funding, we were able to make the bathroom uh, fully accessible. So I, uh, I don't want to cast a negative perspective on all this, but I want to highlight how important the funding sources that are coming here together and how at risk they are. Uh, because a lot of people, when they talk about it, they just look at a line. They don't look at the names, the lives that have been impacted by those funding sources. And I just want to bring that uh, to light. So again, congratulations. And I guess we will shuffle some dirt, but turn it back to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, the weather uh, kind of... Um uh, put a damper on uh, shoveling the dirt out front so we have some uh, fake dirt here, if you will. Um, but again, I want to thank everyone. You know, they say it, uh, it takes a village to raise a child, well, it takes a community to build uh, affordable housing. And I want to thank everyone in the community uh, for your support. Again, uh, Leon Wiener, Sinair, George Danman from the Danman Firm, um, all of our, our representatives. Um, Again, it's just been a long time coming. We've uh, had a lot, a lot of help. Uh, Ingleside would not be successful without your uh, support. Um, I believe that Glenn, uh, George, uh, Wayne Turner um, will be outside after we shovel some dirt if anyone has any questions for them uh, about the project. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, you all to come up and shovel some dirt.